This bridge was kind of a failure. Or maybe it wasn't. Let's discuss. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. Last week, I built this bridge in a speed build where I left the subject up to random chance, kind of a Russian roulette build. And overall, it was a really fun project. It turned out looking pretty cool. And now I have a bridge that I can use in my game. I mentioned in that video that if I had more time to build it or if I were to build it again after doing this one, there are some things that I would have done differently. And a few people asked me to specifically elaborate on those points. It's very easy for me a lot of the time to build something and then just say, oh, I would have done some things differently next time. But that probably isn't actually the most helpful for you guys without knowing really what's going on in my head as to what I think would be valuable to redo differently. And I thought in this episode, it would be a fun exercise to sort of critique and review this build so that I could talk in more detail about the successes and failures, the wins and loses, the good things and the bad with this build so that if you're about to go build one of those, you have not only the video tutorial of me doing it, but also my retrospective on things I would do differently. And you can kind of combine those two and some of your own ideas and come up with hopefully an even better outcome than I did here. I want to be very clear when entering into this critique that it's going to be weighted on some of the negative aspects because the negative aspects are the ones that we really learn from. But I don't want to imply that I think this project was a failure or that it was bad or that I should be upset about it or ashamed of it or anything. I think this thing looks really good and I know that I now have a bridge to use in my game whereas a week ago I didn't. That's a huge win. It's a huge success. Going on some of my previous kind of vlog videos, that's my whole message is just build. And if things aren't perfect, it doesn't matter. At least you got a cool piece and you can learn from it. This is mostly just an exercise in reflecting on techniques and analyzing builds. And I think that's going to be kind of fun, hopefully. But I don't want to portray a message that I think that this build was a failure. Because it wasn't. It, 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 it's a pretty, like, it's a good bridge. So let's take a closer look. Overall, I think that this bridge looks pretty darn good and it looks great on a game table and it will be an excellent bit of terrain for my game. I have no reservations about putting this on my game table and using it, I can be proud of it and I think it will add some cool immersion to my uh, game table. There are, however, some things on this that I would not do again. I would definitely do differently. Some of those things are related to the way this bridge actually functions. Some of them are related to the way it looks, and some of them are related to the way uh, it's actually usable on the game table. So first, let's talk aesthetics. I like the look of this. I think it has that nice small town old stone bridge look. I think that the archways turned out really really nice. Personally I've struggled with archways in the past and not getting the shape of the stones quite right to ride a curve like this but I think on this one they turned out pretty good. This side was the first one I did and you'll see there's some bigger gaps because I was still figuring it out. But by the time I got to this side, I realized what about the right wedge shape was to make this arch look good and I really like it. The individual bricks, I absolutely love. I think that anytime you have the opportunity to do a layer of actual individual stones or bricks, you should absolutely do it because they always look awesome. They give a piece so much depth and realism with all the little sizes. Even here, spots like this, where when I was doing my brickwork, I created a weird little gap. I just filled it in with a little sliver of stone. And those are some of the best looking parts, in my opinion. I like all the flocking and the little grass. I think that really adds some nice realism. But 
more importantly, I think it adds a nice secondary contrasting color to the overall gray tone of the bridge and makes it look more visually appealing with some of that green on it. I really like these columns at the end that flank the bridge. I think those are a nice touch and I definitely like this cobblestone pattern. So aesthetically, those are the things that I really like. Now, in terms of aesthetics that I dislike, and would not do again. The first thing is that these pillars I just did out of a single brick of foam with an etched line in it. And I think that they, like these support ones, don't look nearly as good as the individual stonework on the walls. If I were to build this again, I would definitely do this out of some individual pieces or cladding to give it some more of that depth. The support columns here were something that I regretted mid build. I didn't regret it until I had already put these bricks on. So it was too late to take them off and infill. I don't like them for a few reasons. One is that compared to this brickwork, they look just kind of like monolithic chunks and that doesn't really read well for me. I would have preferred if it, if they looked like they were made out of individual bricks as well. I also don't like how they project out. It doesn't make sense. It was one of those things that when building, I thought it looked good early on in my head. And then when it came to finishing details, it was a little bit strange. I think if these support columns had been exactly the same size as these outer pillars and in plane with them, so shifted over a bit and visible on each side cutting through, then they would have looked more correct. And I think I would have liked them. At this point, they just don't really make much sense. And I'm okay with things on buildings not really making sense just in terms of aesthetics, but I don't think that they add a lot to this piece aesthetically. Speaking of that, these top stone caps I mentioned in the build video, I really don't like the way they look. They came out looking like an army tank tread, and I think that has a lot to do with the proportions of these stones because they're these narrow, like rectangles. It it, that's just what it makes me think of. I think it would have looked better with square cap pieces and it would have read a little bit differently. Again, would have looked much better if they were done with individual pieces, just like this brick cladding. This piece here, I think sort of saved it a little bit and I don't, I don't mind that it has that nice kind of stone arch cap look. I think I'm okay with these bricks. I would have liked it better if they covered this whole side. This layering here doesn't really make any sense, but it's not, it's not a huge grievance. It's just something that if I make this again, I will do differently. Another thing that may not be that noticeable, just seeing it quickly on video. When I made the template and this shape in my head, I pictured a radius arch coming up and then turning into a flat portion, a level portion, and then arching back down. So this section here on the template and on the form is flat. It's flat for such a short portion of this bridge that it doesn't actually look flat. And even this part here, because this is so short, isn't flat. So it kind of just looks like I screwed up the archway and that it should be a continual radius. So that's one thing that I think was a bit of a fail. And if doing this again, I would just make it a continuous arch or make this bridge a lot longer and make this flat section a lot longer, including finding a way to make this road section flat. And then I think it would make more sense. Now to touch on the actual playability of this bridge. While it looks great on the table, I didn't realize until I was shooting the glamour shots for the last video that there is a big flaw in this bridge in terms of playability. Because of the size I made it, the length and this radius, these approaches, these little curves are a lot steeper than I realized they were when using minis. And if I take a mini and put it on it, it just, well, it stays if I catch it right. Otherwise, sometimes it just slides. And also it looks a little strange. I mean, when you put a person on this, you realize that this would be an incredibly steep incline for a little footbridge. It's okay when it's a Reaper Mini or a WizKids Mini that are light. You might be able to get them to stay, but 
you don't want to be messing around trying to get them in the right position when you're playing and then when there's other movement on it they slide it's even worse with a metal mini a metal mini because they're heavy they just want to slide and some of them actually want to topple right over and unfortunately the way this is done there's only a very small section of kind of playable area where you don't have to worry about your minis falling over so that i think is the absolute biggest flaw in this bridge because anything aesthetic or visual who cares really it's just a game prop but when the actual playability is affected by the design then i think it's a legitimate problem that should be reconsidered if you are going to build one of these my warning to you would be to try to make this incline a lot less steep maybe make your bridge longer and then it will work a lot better for minis it's one of those situations where you're trying to do something as a freestanding prop that in the real world doesn't exist like that you don't often find bridges that are just arched like this out of nowhere a lot of the time there'll be a creek bed and the bridge will actually go down into that creek bed and be at a flat elevation to the ground or the road and then the arch is below i'm sure there's some city scenarios where there's stuff like this but i don't think their archways are going to be this steep the other bit of a fail in terms of playability is just an oversight of i didn't think of it when i was building it i just arbitrarily chose this width in retrospect if i had made this opening just a little bit wider i could have taken one of my standard three by three tiles and slid it right in to create a road that leads up to this bridge you know so it would be something like that but i just made this opening under a quarter inch too narrow i think that when i cut this strip i made it three inches which would have been the same as this but then once I clad each interior and added these bump out pillars, just enough to make that not work. So that's an unfortunate side effect of not really planning. Not a huge deal, but one of those things that it sure would be nice if it worked that way. And if I build another one, I would do that. Now, in terms of the actual build, when I do speed builds, I don't really think too much about construction. I just start building and I just go with what I started, whether it's good or bad. And I think I made it a lot harder on myself by doing it with these two side pieces and then filling in supports. Realistically, when I cut the first profiled side piece, I shouldn't have split it in two. What I really should have done was make multiple pieces out of inch and a half thick XPS foam and layered them together so that this was one solid form in the middle. And then I could have added a side piece that is taller. It was definitely more trouble than it was worth to do it this way. Uh, it, in the end, it caused me some issues and it did work out fine in the end. And this thing is rigid and I, I wouldn't worry about it in terms of strength. This thing is gonna hold up pretty good. But I think making it out of one solid piece would actually make the construction a lot easier. It would make the preparation and the cutting of the form a little bit more work, but actually building it would have been a lot easier and faster. Other than that, I like everything about this piece. I'm still happy with it overall. Like I said, all of these things are just improvements that I would make when making it again. And I think all of the criticisms I have about this are really inconsequential and don't affect you know the use of this it's they're really small and minimal with the exception of this incline like i said this playability issue is a real problem trust me when this is in game and you know people are starting to try to place their minis on it that's when i'm going to be really frustrated with this piece because yeah, a, a piece of terrain that's not totally playable might as well just sit on your shelf as decoration. And maybe that's what will happen. Maybe I'll build a new one that's a lot more playable, uses some of the improvements I mentioned here. And maybe I'll break this one up and use it as a destroyed bridge because 
then the playability will matter a lot less. All right, guys, that's all I'd like to really say about this little build here. I hope that you found this little exercise useful and informative and entertaining. If you did, hit that like button and drop me a comment below. Maybe let me know some of the things that you thought I should have done differently or your favorite parts of this build. Of course, if you are going to build one yourself, I'd love to see it, so please, Post some pictures on the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group. There'll be a link in the video description here. Tag Black Magic Craft in it so that I can see your sweet project. If you need to pick up any of the tools or supplies to build yourself a sweet little bridge and you want to make sure you're getting the right stuff and you want to help out the channel in the process, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There you will find my essential equipment store where I list all of the tools and supplies that I use myself and that I recommend to you. All those sales give Black Magic Craft a small commission that help fund these videos. Another great way that you can help fund these videos and make sure that they keep going and improving is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds and that emotional support from that group of people is fundamental for ensuring that these videos come out every single Friday. And I would love it if you took a look there, if you were to consider joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. It's a great little community and this channel needs and loves all the support that it can get. If this is your first time checking out Black Magic Craft, this was a weird video to start on. Hit that subscribe button, check out my playlist. I got tons of other cool build videos for your tabletop role-playing games. Lots of stuff that you can learn. And until next week, guys, Cheers, happy crafting, and try not to be as harsh of a critic on your own builds as I am on mine. Keep building, keep being awesome. <laughs>